Six million years ago, we branched off from the family tree we share with our ape cousins and monkey uncles. We may have evolved since then, but there's still a monkey in all of us. In this episode, we'll show you what it takes to be an alpha male. Alphas get first pick at the basics of life. Food, territory, and females. And we're just the same. World leaders, celebrities, even your boss. Human alphas rule the world. With experiments and hidden cameras... I really don't want to die! I really don't want to die! We'll show you how to channel your inner ape to get what you want. We'll be surprising strangers. Aping around. Get out of my box! And looking for that telltale primal behavior. Yeah, look, man. What's your problem? You're talking. So get ready to learn the laws of the jungle. Because like it or not, we're going ape. So you want to be an alpha, but where do you start? Well, forget everything your girlfriend ever told you, because the first rule of being an alpha is this. Size matters. In the ape world, it's easy to spot an alpha. They're really big. Alpha gorillas are the only adult males in their troop, and twice the size of the females. Alpha chimps aren't always the largest in their group, but they make up for it by puffing themselves up to look the biggest. It's a display designed to intimidate, as primatologist Charlotte Uhlenbrook discovered. When an alpha male chimp starts to display, everybody gets out the way, and I was obviously not quick enough on that particular occasion. She walked away unharmed to continue her chimp studies, including how they communicate their status. The most fundamental thing that any individual can do to increase their status is to look bigger. And chimps classically raise their hair, and when we feel tense, the hair on the back of our neck goes up, that's the same thing. An ape who sees a more dominant one coming doesn't think twice. See how he puts his head down and makes himself smaller? He's submitting in a very obvious way. To see if human apes retain this instinctive behavior, Charlotte's at the perfect human alpha watering hole a busy city bar, and she's brought a couple of friends along. One is five feet, two inches tall, and the other is seven feet, two. They're about to commit the ultimate crime, helping themselves to another man's beer. The bar is rigged with hidden cameras to catch the drinkers' immediate responses. Will they react to size using the same body language as apes? Look how quickly the first victim reacts when the smaller man takes his drink. <laughs> Let's look at that again. The drinker immediately stops him in his tracks. He's not physically attacked like an ape in the jungle might be. Instead, he gets the human equivalent. He's sent packing with a patronizing laugh. Now it's the big guy's turn. Watch for the difference in body language when the same drinker has his beer taken again. This time, there's no order to stop. And definitely no laughing. It's not so funny now. Our little man is back to try and steal another beer. Once again, he's failed. And the big guy's next victim? The drinker sees him, but doesn't dare challenge him. Time and time again, the shorter man is confronted, and the big guy is allowed to do as he pleases. Let's rewind and find out what happened to the little guy in ape terms. That was an absolutely immediate reaction. The victim gives him a direct stare, which in the primate world is a definite threat. But how did the drinkers react when the bigger beer bandit went in? As soon as he saw how big the guy was, he wasn't prepared to challenge him. The way he's turned and he's put his palm up, that is an absolutely classic gesture in chimps to try and solicit support. You can see, even before anything's happened, the little guy at the bar has moved out of the way. It's as if he's sensed this big guy coming up behind him. The victim glances at him, confirms just how enormous he is, and then does a very, very abrupt head movement as he averts his gaze and puts his head down. Again, that's something that you would see right across the primates, a kind of submissive behavior. It's a fact of life. 
Being bigger helps you get what you want. Research shows that an incredible 58% of Fortune 500 CEOs are over six feet tall, compared with 14.5% of the general public. Big is definitely best. But what if you're not six feet two and built like a tank? Well, even if you don't look big, you can still walk big. Alpha chimps use their power walk. With their hair up on end, chest puffed out, and arms swinging, they're saying, don't mess with me, I'm in charge. And perhaps not surprisingly, this alpha swagger is also a favorite of our world leaders. But it's not the only alpha trait these heads of state use to their advantage. Another trick that can help give alphas an edge in their battle for power is gray hair. Male gorilla's hair turns gray by about 15 years old. The silver back signals their status as the dominant male of the group. And the same is true for humans. So put away the hair dye, because we automatically perceive higher status in men when we see those salt and pepper shades. Apes have already shown us how to get that alpha look, but they can also help us master the meeting. Many of the greetings we use today have primal origins. Chimpanzees reach out to touch hands just like we do. These more intimate chimp greetings may also look familiar, but they're actually communicating their dominance. Here, the lower ranking female with her baby is literally kissing the hand of the alpha male. He keeps eye contact, and holds his head high while she puts her head down in submission. These two hugging males have just decided who's alpha. See how one has his arms outside the hug? This is a sure sign he's gained the upper hand. So how much of this primal behavior do we carry around with us today? To find out, we've set up a unique experiment to show the ways in which an alpha reaches the top. It stays there. Leading the experiment is former Special Forces interrogator Greg Hartley. In his job, being able to identify and dominate an alpha male is crucial. He's invited six complete strangers to come and help rebuild a car. And they all think they've got what it takes to be an alpha. I've been groomed and trained and shown the responsibility of being a leader, and I actually don't know how to live life otherwise. Yes, I am a leader. I have led uh, troops in the past. Why am I a leader? Because I make things happen for not only myself, but for other people. I've played sports, I've been a captain of sports teams. Um, I know I can assume a leadership role if need be. I think for myself, and leaders usually think for themselves. I mean, no, follower, I'm not much of a follower. I usually go my own way about things. But as long as our team is sharing the same ideas, we're all leaders. What they don't know is that they're secretly being filmed to see who will become the alpha of the group. Humans make first impressions in about 30 seconds. By knowing exactly what to do, you can establish dominance in that very first meeting. We've seen how chimps use subtle body language, like getting the upper hand, holding their head high, and making bold eye contact to establish dominance in the first seconds of any greeting. Now keep an eye on our grease monkey's body language as they meet for the very first time. Rich is already in the room. Next in is Junior, who enters with the big strides of a chimp and a silverback style head of gray hair. Then it's Novum's turn. But who's got the upper hand? Junior swaggers in the room with oversized steps. He moves in and exaggerates male behavior and then reaches out and grabs Rich's hand so that he's in a dominant position when he's shaking hands. Novem looks comfortable and casual as he walks into the room taking small steps. Everything looks okay until he reaches and grabs Junior's hand and then he turns, touches his cap, drops his chin over his throat and cast his eyes down and away. Novum has revealed his status by acting submissively toward Junior, who is still the alpha male of the three. Guess not today, though. No. Next in, it's Justin. Here comes Justin, walking in the room with large alpha posture, Justin. moving comfortably. Justin, Junior. Junior? Junior. Justin, this is your room. Has a large handshake, his chin up, and as he grabs the other guy's hands, he puts his hand in the upper position on top of theirs. Here's a challenger for Junior. Along with Junior, Justin's textbook ape-like dominant gestures put him in the running for alpha status. Now it's Isom's turn to try and master the meeting. Isom is a non-event. As he walks in, no one pays him any attention. Junior and Justin are focused on each other. Isom finds food and moves off to the edge of the herd, much like Rich. Last in is Naftali. If he's going to challenge for alpha status, he'll have to master meeting a whole room of human apes. This guy strides in comfortably, has an oversized smile, even stops and forces people to come to him for handshakes. He's handing them out and holding court. 
Then he stands in the middle of the group and he becomes the center of attention. Everyone else is his audience. So Naftali has just shaken up the chemistry. I think we may have a new alpha. But we still have Junior and Justin competing for second. So round one of our battle of the alphas goes to Naftali. But what will happen when his alpha status is challenged? What's the problem? You're What's talking. Problem? Yeah, who are you talking? And how will people react when this alpha uses guerrilla tactics to become the ultimate personal space invader? We've already seen how our alpha ape cousins use their size and breeding methods to dominate others. But there's another way alphas teach us to control groups of people. By acing the space. In the ape world, alphas control the group by controlling the space. A really confident alpha like this silverback gorilla takes center stage, making everyone else scatter. By moving out of his way, the other gorillas instinctively submit to the dominant male. This displacement is a simple but very effective reminder of who's boss. So could this same trick work in the human jungle? To find out, we've rigged hidden cameras at a shopping mall and sent in our very own silverback gorilla. He might not look alpha, but he's definitely going to act like one by finding out if human apes also act submissively when their most valuable territory, their personal space, is invaded. No one seems to question his alpha-like behavior. They scatter just like displaced subordinate gorillas or shuffle over to let him sit where he wants. He acts just like a silverback, going wherever he likes. People submit to his dominant moves by getting up and moving out of the way. For chimpanzees, dominating their territory is much harder. Chimps can live in groups of more than 100 and have to defend a much larger area to protect their food and females. Alphas use elaborate displays to control the group, dragging branches or throwing rocks to dominate as much space as possible. So how will our grease monkeys fare in their territorial battle for dominance of the group? They think they're here to take part in a TV show about cars. But actually, alpha expert Greg Hartley is secretly analyzing them to find out who's the alpha male. Watching their greetings, he finds potential alphas in Junior and Justin. But the real master of the meeting was Naftali, who at this point is the most likely true alpha. They're given a team task, but that's not what we're interested in. Instead, we'll be watching the fight to control the space around them in a silent battle for dominance. So what we're going to do is look at territory, look at how they stake their claim, how they manage their territory and their property, and who owns the most at the end of the game. In the jungle, displacing subordinate apes, taking the best spot and using physical displays to dominate space are crucial to establishing alpha status. See how many alpha territorial moves you can spot in the grease monkeys battle for space, which starts with choosing where to sit. They all jockey for position to move into chairs. Naftali's hanging back for some reason. Keep an eye on what happens when two of them end up going for the same chair. As they move into the room, Isom moves in, but Naftali is having no part of that and sends him on his way. What he's doing is saying, I can take what I want, when I want, and how I want it. It's a perfect example of human ape displacement. And Isom walks away in defeat, chin down in submission to the more dominant male. Now watch how the group responds to Naftali's bold display. Justin takes a central position. A great spot for an alpha to control his group. And in response, Junior immediately starts to take up more space of his own. Now the turf war is going to start. Junior's starting to make himself larger and larger. But notice Justin has control of all the tools and he is expanding his real estate as well. An interesting note is that Junior, while he's taking more space, he's not willing to encroach on Naftali's space. He's using Justin as a human shield. Naftali is quiet while the action plays out, but he responds to Junior's space invading show of dominance with a big alpha display of his own. Now we gotta do one of these right here. All right by balling up paper and putting his materials all over the room. Naftali is staking claim to space all around him. And that's not all. The subordinate apes even help maintain Naftali's space. The other two, trying to accommodate Naftali in his conquering of space, skulk around and pick up the paper. It's clear that these two are submissive to Naftali's alpha male. All in. <laughs> this is a classic alpha ape at work, 
and Junior immediately retreats, reducing his space. Naftali takes control of the proceedings with all attention on him. But I would rather see that the project actually does well. At the end of round two, we've seen Justin take control of the resources. We've seen Junior try to hold on by endorsing it in the office space. But at this point, neither has mounted a successful challenge to Naftali. I think that's good. The Grease Monkey's power hierarchy already seems set in place. But what do you think will happen when a really hot female ape enters the group? Hi. Hey. And what amazing physical changes happen when we take acting like a chimp to a whole new level? We've seen how the Grease Monkeys attempt to control space, just like Alpha Apes do. But what happens to the Grease Monkeys' power hierarchy when a female ape enters the group? Feel free to get goofy. In the ape world, the battle for space and dominance is not a quiet one. So if you want things to start going your way, you have to take another page out of the Alpha rulebook. Use your voice. With all this screaming and grunting and barking, you could be forgiven for thinking that all chimps sound the same. But you couldn't be further from the truth. These are pant hoots. They're a call sign distinctive to each individual chimp. And in alpha males, it's all about making as much noise as possible. High-ranking individuals are a bit louder. Um, it may well be that it's just simply because they are more confident, they're more assertive, but it also maybe is that they are sort of demonstrating their communication skills. Tone is another really important factor. Low, deep sounds are associated with big body size. So if you're trying to threaten um, another individual, drop your voice. Humans will often try to lower the tone of their voice in order to sound more authoritative. So macho men have deeper voices. Because both of us love big action movies. It has nothing to do with real big muscles. It sounds pretty obvious, but how much can the pitch of your voice actually affect other people's behavior? To find out, we sent our own cheeky chip to stake out some personal territory in the middle of a busy train station. It's his box, and he's going to try and defend it from the human apes rushing for their trains. First, he's going to use a soft and high tone of voice. Let's see if anyone obeys his orders. Get out of my box. 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 No one could be less interested in our chimp's demand. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. He can't stop anyone invading his territory. Get out of my box. Where's my box? Now he's going to adopt an alpha chimp's voice low in tone, and loud in volume. But will anyone really take notice? Get out of my box! Get out of my box! Get out of my box! Suddenly, everyone is going out of their way to avoid trespassing box. on the Alpha Chimp's territory. Get out of my box! Get out of my box! No one stops to think why. They're just instinctively doing what he says. Get out of my box! They'll even stop in their tracks to Get obey his unusual but masterful command. Get out my box. Get out my box. Get out my box. Get out my box. With his alpha voice, our chimp has become king of his jungle box. Get out of my box! Waiting there, actually, because some of them are almost stepping into the box and then uh, stop and then go round. Just without even consciously being aware of it, they're so influenced by the authority of his tone that they're obeying his command. Just like in chimps. Get out of my box! Thanks. We've already discovered how alpha apes use their size, space, and voice to maintain their status. Now cast your mind back to our huge alpha male who stole other people's beer. His size meant he didn't come across much resistance. But look what happens here. Despite his slight frame, this brave drinker stands up to the massive human ape and takes his beer back. But what stopped him from instinctively submitting to the larger ape? Let's take another look. Have you spotted it? That's right. He's got a female friend. Because having a woman to defend brings out the alpha in any male. Pay attention, and you'll find out what girl power can do for you.
when a trip to the zoo turns into a nightmare as a raging 200 pound gorilla oh my god threatens to join oh the party oh my god, oh my god. I really don't In the ape world, being alpha is everything. And nothing gets the males jostling and fighting for position more than the presence of a female. They all want a mate, but only the alpha is guaranteed to get one. So to be a successful alpha, you're going to have to be able to get the girl. For all apes, the ultimate prize in the battle for dominance is getting the chance to mate with the female. Huge silverbacks have no trouble getting first pick of the females, but alpha chimps living in large groups face stiff competition. Even if you are not the highest ranking individual, there's always potential for mating. Yeah? Other males are always kind of waiting in the wings, waiting for their opportunity. But one of the best strategies for amongst chimps um, is to basically try and lure the female away from the group. A fertile female creates tension in the group because each male ups his game. But to stand any chance of mating, lower ranking males have to be sneaky. See how this male is constantly looking around to make sure the alpha can't see him? And when the coast is clear, he seizes his opportunity? And we're not much different. I was unfaithful. I had affairs. I cheated. Even though humans settle down with mates, it's this instinctive ape-like urge to battle for females which can still drive male behavior. It's time to rejoin our group of wannabe alphas. They think they're taking part in a TV show about cars, they don't know that alpha specialist Greg Hartley is secretly analyzing the instinctive struggle for power within the group. They've only just met, and a hierarchy has already formed. Falling! <laughs> with Naftali as the alpha male of the group. In the jungle, alphas get first pick of the girls. But all the males jostle for position when she's around, in the hope of getting a piece of the action. Right now, the grease monkeys are on a break. So let's see what happens when we introduce an attractive female ape into the group. Hi. Hey. When Neftali screams, hey, what he's doing is drawing attention to himself from the woman hey. and staking claim to the woman with his group. It's what all alphas do. And having done it, watch how Naftali's confidence builds and how he starts to dominate. I can have everybody just kind of line up. Can we be friends and all that? Or is you it can do like... whatever you want. Neftali demonstrates dominance by putting his arms up over the other two men in the picture. They immediately react by putting their hands in front of their genitals. That's called the fig leaf posture. That's a threat response posture. But Neftali's clearly trying to establish, look who I am. That's for her more than anything else that he's doing. That's, again, posturing and, and he's pounding his chest. It's all chimp-like behavior in the presence of a female. But keep an eye on what happens when she gives the non-alphas a chance to interact. Sorry, I'm having a problem. I can't. Here you see Justin trying to figure out what to do. Damsel in distress. Let me take a look at it for you. This is really silly. <laughs> so, got to help her. And he runs over. Are you trying to turn it on? Junior is going to go over and help as well, because Junior needs to demonstrate that he's at least as good as the secondary alpha. OK. That might. Is that better? Thank you. That's it. Junior returns with confidence bolstered by contact with Lauren, no longer fig leaves. Isom feels that same confidence and crosses his arms. Now it's an all-out battle for female attention. You feel free to get goofy. <laughs> <laughs> when Neftali starts to display, Isom immediately covers up as if to say, don't look at me. One, two, three. So look at all the power struggles going on here. Justin starts by expanding out. Even Junior does kind of a Fonzie. Then, of course, Neftali has to show the superior body language and show part of his actual body. Neftali has to get the girl, and he wastes no time in making his next move. So what are you doing this long Can we weekend? get one more group shot? Yeah. Oh, jump the gun on that one. And another uh, action film. Wow. Our alpha male's just been knocked off his perch and by a woman. So what are you doing this long can weekend? Can we get one more group shot? Yeah. Oh, jump the gun on that one. After he's injured, you can even see his body language starts to become more strutty. He's even now concerned about where he is in the picture, how he stands, where he's at. He needs to re-demonstrate that I'm in fact alpha when everyone knew it a few minutes ago. Thanks to our female ape, Naftali's alpha status is now on the line. In our final test, Super Alpha Greg will go head-to-head -head with Naftali, but who will come out on top? We've seen how important it is for an alpha ape to get the girl, but there are more alpha techniques we can borrow from our ape cousins to get you on top of the game, including one very simple trick. You ready for this? That can give you an ultra-alpha testosterone boost. We've seen how important females can be in making or breaking an alpha ape. And if the role of alpha male is still up for grabs, we can look to our ape cousins again for our next alpha rule. 
fake it to make it. Incredibly, scientists have discovered that by pumping ourselves up like an alpha ape, we can actually become one. In their moments of feeling most powerful, alpha apes adopt big, wide postures. Can this kind of big body language make human apes feel more powerful? To find out, Hollywood's number one ape actor, Peter Elliott, is taking some eager volunteers to tackle the world's highest indoor bungee jump. He spent his life acting as chimps and gorillas in blockbuster movies. Today, he's teaching these guys the body language of chimps. So, I want your legs to be as short as possible. Half of his group will become alpha males. That's pretty damn good. Chimpanzees have something called a pant hoot. One of the things they use it for is building up power and confidence inside. But will they show more courage when it comes to jumping than the others who he's teaching to be lower ranking chimps? See if you can actually walk keeping as low as you can. That is absolutely brilliant, guys, brilliant. Crouch right down, put your arms around yourself, that nice sort of gentle introverted feel. None of these human apes have bungee jumped before. And at 150 feet, this jump is definitely not for the faint-hearted. Just before they leap, Peter's going to get the alphas to pump themselves up and the others to act subdued. But will the alphas be the bravest when it comes to taking the plunge? Can they fake it to make it? First up are the low-ranking chimps. In the jungle, apes who adopt passive poses like this are less confident, less able to act as they please. Deep spot. Peter asks his low-ranking chimps to curl into a submissive Deep ball for two minutes before they jump. Let's see how they do. You ready for this? Oh, no, I don't think I am. It takes an average of 21 seconds for the low-ranking chimps to take the plunge. It's probably the scariest thing I've ever done. And one of them couldn't do it at all. Is it the height or just the challenge? I just can't explain it. It's just... Yeah, yeah. Next, it's the alphas. Alpha apes often raise their arms and scream out pant hoots in aggressive displays of confidence and dominance. But will a combination of pant hoots... ...and standing with their arms raised for two minutes help pump the alphas up enough to give them more confidence than the low-ranking chimps? And whenever you're ready, Amy. Every member of the Alpha group jumped in under 10 seconds, almost three times faster than the subordinate chimps. Loved it. I'll do it again any day. And it's all because we're hardwired to adopt wide, ape-like postures when we feel powerful. Just like this, the V-pose. Scientists have found it actually affects our hormones. Testosterone is the main male sex hormone, although it's also produced in women. Higher testosterone in men means a higher drive for dominance. Studies show that the V-pose can actually raise your testosterone by 20%, while a submissive pose lowers it by 10%. But the V-pose can do even more for us. Scientists have found that it can actually lower your levels of cortisol, the stress hormone, by 25%. People with naturally lower cortisol levels tend to be more laid back. And guess what? Your average alpha ape, as well as having high testosterone, is also low in cortisol. Because being powerful is also about how you react to stress. Look at our world leaders. Do they panic when the going gets tough? Or do they seem cool and composed? Nobody's more concerned about their safety and security than I am. Alphas may be pumped full of testosterone, but they're also relaxed and effective. The key role of an alpha is to protect the group. So they have to follow our final rule. Be calm under pressure. When there's trouble, a good alpha male knows when to let the group sort it out for themselves. And when to step in. If the leader can't protect his group, he'll be cast out and another ape will take his place. Our grease monkey Naftali's alpha status is already on the line after he failed to get the girl. But we're going to give him one more chance to prove himself by putting his alpha status to the ultimate test. The grease monkeys know they're being filmed as they work on this old car. But what they don't know is that Super Alpha Greg is about to go in and shake things up. So they've already bonded as a group. What I'm going to do is go in and pick on each of them individually, kind of be an obvious threat to see if Naftali steps up to the plate and does what the Alpha should and reclaims control of his own group. 
Greg pretends to be a reserve team member, drafted in at the last minute. Greg. Hey, Naftali. Naftali, nice to meet you. He's about to start causing trouble. What you got? Right. You want to write right direction? Yeah. yeah. Greg's already started to verbally and physically dominate members of Alpha Naftali's group. But Naftali doesn't seem to notice. So Greg moves on to Junior and questions his position as task manager, a role given to him by Alpha Naftali himself. We gotta organize better next. You agree? For sure. What? Hey, Justin. Yo. When we get ready to go back together with this thing, yeah. you ought to be the one figuring out how things go back together, because he agrees. You know, he might not be as organized as you are, and that might, is that right? Is that right, Junior? We're, we're good. Greg's an obvious threat to the group's stability, and it's the Alpha's job to sort it out. But there's still no reaction from Naftali. Has he hung up his Alpha boots for good, or is he just staying calm under pressure, waiting for the perfect time to step in? Greg gets the group together to try and provoke Naftali into proving his Alpha credentials. Yo, next time we have, like, oh, yeah, next time we have to organize. You're the one that make, that's making that decision. All you're doing is going around from place to place to place, and then he's organizing. He's more organized than you are. All right, so let's get to the next task. Yeah. We're but so we got to organize it. The rest of the group reacts to the bait. Things get out of control. I, 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 we, we all have to come to an agreement. Yeah, look, man, I, I, what's, I, I, what's the problem? You're what's talking. Problem? Yeah, let's, so are you talking. What's the, uh, let's go, what's the problem? let's go. But will Naftali react? Has he got what it takes to be a real alpha? Uh, this is good, this is good. This man is talented, and this man is talented. We're all talented. Finally, the alpha male steps in with a brilliant, instinctive alpha move. First, he calms things down to try and regain control by complimenting the entire group. He creates cohesion and allows everyone, including himself, to remain part of the group. So in the, in the first phase, we were looking at team building or bonding, and Naftali immediately established dominance there. So it was clear that he was the alpha. Ball in. The second part, he took over turf, even had people cleaning up behind him. Again, established dominance. The third piece, he was knocked off his perch. So what are you doing this long Can we weekend? get one more group shot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. jump the gun on that one. And then finally, in the fourth part, he's allowed someone else into the group who is starting to beat up his subordinates. He could, at some personal risk, step in and intervene. And that's what he did. That means that he really is alpha material. With that alpha male testosterone and cortisol, Naftali stayed calm under pressure before stepping in to protect his group. A true alpha indeed. In the final and most important alpha male test, we'll find out what will happen when these guys come face to face with an escaped killer gorilla. With the help of our ape cousins, we've uncovered all the secrets of how to be an alpha ape. From dominating your space to getting the girl, and above all, protecting your group. But the ultimate alpha test is what happens when the group is really under threat. So to find out, we're going to put a group of innocent people in sudden extreme danger. We've arranged for a fake party to be set up at the zoo. This is the room where all the local businessmen, everyone's gonna come. And here are the caterers. Chris, Nas, Moses, and Patrick. They think the party is real, but all the zoo staff, including event organizer Kellyanne, are actors. We've rigged hidden cameras all over the building. It's also ape actor Peter Elliott's chance to show off his talents as an ape man. With the help of this state-of-the-art animatronic gorilla suit, it'll help reveal which one of the unsuspecting crew is the alpha in a very stressful situation. I want to go get like all the sternos and the tablecloths and the plateware and all that kind of stuff. Their normal day of catering work is about to get a whole lot more interesting. We just have to go up to back up and get that stuff and then we should be fine. Okay, guys, can you go back into the room, please? We're Straight back in, please. Though, yes, it, it, well, it's probably on. just a precaution, but you guys need to go back into the room, please. Quick as you can, please. Thank you. Okay, that's my sector. I've got to go. This could be serious. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We know that's just Peter going ape, but these guys think there's a 200-pound gorilla on the loose. It's got giant fists, the strength of 10 men, and could bite their heads off in a heartbeat. Please stay in here, okay? Just stay there, okay? I need to leave this door open so I can get back in. No. Just stay there. The zookeeper left the door open, and the group is in danger of a violent gorilla attack. Someone's got to step up. It's time to find out who's the alpha ape in this group. Hey, 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 don't worry, we'll protect you, all right? I don't know how you're going to protect me against an ape. Well, I won't be happy to. <laughs> Trust me, I won't. 
Right away, Chris steps in to reassure Kellyanne. He's speaking up, stating his intention to protect a member of the group and getting the girl all at the same time. He's also keeping calm under pressure, for now at least. <laughs> The gorilla gets more aggressive, and Kellyanne starts to really freak out. I really don't want to die. I really don't want to die. I really don't want to die right now. I really don't want to die. This is pretty freaky. But this time, it's Nas who spots his chance to protect the group female. How will Chris react? Oh my god. In true alpha ape style, Chris goes straight over to Kellyanne, physically dominating Nas, reclaiming the space around his female and getting his girl back. Hey, 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 look at me. Oh, my God. She might be comforted, but there are five people in extreme danger here. The gorilla's getting louder and closer. Also, the door is still open. Will anyone have the guts to put their life on the line and shut the door? It looks like Chris is stepping up, but will he succeed in his bid to save the day? Not satisfied with getting the girl and dominating the other males, Chris has shown he has the ultimate control of space by shutting out the gorilla, establishing a safe territory for his group, and saving their lives. He's shown that in the face of danger, a real alpha does everything necessary to keep his group and his position safe. He did it by following the alpha rules. Maybe you should too. Because in the concrete jungle, we need to adapt our alpha skills all the time to suit every social occasion. So remember, make yourself look big. Master those meetings. Ace the space around you. Get out of my box. Alphas also know how to use their voice. They make sure they get the girl. And if necessary, they'll fake it to make it. Finally, of course, remember to stay calm under pressure. The key to success is to remember your primate past and embrace your inner ape. Because if you act alpha, you will be alpha.